Hello, everybody, uh, especially YouTube, and to the live Twitch chat. Welcome to Amaz's Auto Chess Unit Guide. Finally updated it. There are so many changes to units. Dude, I love Auto Chess right now because they just update their game so much. Just like right today of this recording, there were some uh, unit rebalances as well. But we're going to go over every unit. So even if you're a new player, this video is for you. I will tell you what's the strongest units what the strong builds are, what are some of the abilities do, and what about some secret synergies. They're all gonna be here, okay? So we're gonna rate all the units from uh, one cost to five costs in alphabetical order. So if you wanna search for a unit that you want, that's, that's how you do it. We're gonna rate each unit in terms of three different statistics. First of all, we have damage. Like, you know, how, how much damage does the guy deal? So if it's five star, it's like basically your carry. If it's no stars, then you basically have to look for your damage elsewhere. So yeah, every stat is going to be from one star to five stars. Survival is a very important stat in auto chess because you want your unit to live, right? The longer, the longer the unit lives, the more it can do. And the more it can actually help your other units deal more damage and do their stuff because they can just tank. So that's also for month five. And of course, the most important stat of all, it's utility because there are some units that don't have damage or survival, but when they cast the ultimates, they basically, it's a game changer, right? So we have to look out for that as well. So with that in mind, with these three statistics, let's go ahead and start with the first unit. It's anti-mage, all right? Anti-mage has basically negligible damage. You know, uh, survival, basically every time a unit has two star of survival, it means that it's average, okay? Two star is basically average. And our uh, anti-mage has a very high utility because his ability is mana break, which basically drains mana from whatever he hits and also deals proportional damage uh, based on the mana drained. Anti-mage is really, really powerful if you can get a very fast two-star anti-mage at the beginning of the game, right? Because, well, you just basically stop all ultis from happening. And there are so many um, comps that revolve on getting the ultimates, right? Pretty bad against auto-attackers like Luna and Troll Warlord and, you know, Drow, for example, stuff like that. But otherwise, it's a very, very strong unit. And um, yeah, you just need to kind of uh, know when to transition out of it. Uh, lots of anti-mages suck late game. Like, if you're not building demons, or if you're not be building elves, you should sell your anti-mage. It's really, really good early game, but it starts to drop really significantly in the, lo in the later game, because he only has a thousand health, you know, in the, um, during a level two. So, you gotta be a bit careful with that. Anti-mage is a C. Alright, next up we have Axe. Uh, Axe was really good. When Auto Chess first started, but now he got significantly nerfed, right? Uh, he's not really actually that good anymore. Uh, he doesn't do any damage. He's really good at survivaling because his uh, ability greens him a lot of armor and also taunt, so it acts as a kind of a stun. So it does have a little bit of utility. It's kind of like an AoE ability. But man, orcs and warriors have been pretty bad this patch, so you have to be pretty careful of like not just going all in the warriors especially how much magic damage is going on these days so as is all it's kind of reasonable you know it's just a c it's all right next up we have bat rider oh my god bat rider is one of the shittiest units you want to start with man every time i start with a level two tr uh, bat rider uh just you know round one i, I it, it just really sucks, okay? The only reason bat rider is good is because you want <laughs> you want to make him use trolls or if you want to build knights, because he's both a troll and a knight. And if you build troll and knights, then he becomes really, really spectacular. But as a unit, he's basically crap. His, his ability does nothing. It basically increases the damage you deal, the bat rider deals to the unit that he tars, and also reduces the movement speed. But it's pretty much negligible. Bat rider is a shitty ass unit. He still gets a D. He's not F tier because of the tribes, right? Two of the most relevant tribes in the game, but just don't put Bat Rider into any comp, okay? This only works in Trolls or Knights. Next up, we've got Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter got nerfed uh, when he got first released, but still one of the most insane units. Lots of damage, uh, especially if you're the very fast Bounty 2. Uh, the Shuriken Toss deals a lot of burst damage to a unit and just outright kills any unit at the early game, right? So it's like pretty insane. You can get Tron very easily with Bounty because it's very easy to get three goblins early game. You can also build assassins with Bounty Hunter, uh, very strong. And also Bounty 2, 
basically lasts until like round 20 or round 25. Like you, you can basically carry you until then. So a very solid unit for, for just one cost, right? Just cost one. So it's definitely A tier. Definitely want to pick up a Bounty Hunter early if you can find one. Next up, we've got Clockwork. Clockwork is also a very strong unit in the fact that it's a very good frontline unit. Survives really well because his ability is a mini stun every 0.7 seconds, right? And it just fires them out. So it does a lot of damage as well. So uh, Clockwork is a very good start. Once again, with goblins, you need to know when to transition out of them, right? If you're not going full goblins and you have like a actual tribe that you're aiming to get, you should actually transition out of Clockwork. But just like Bounty, he can carry you to round 20 or even round 25 if you have like a good team. So very good, very good unit here. Clockwork gets an A for me. Next up, we've got Drow. Drow does a lot of damage, right? Uh, her passive basically increases her damage and range. Uh, she's also just a hunter. So if you build hunter, she even deals a lot. However, she is paper as hell. All right, survival is just one star. If someone pokes her, she's dead. And she has no utility because she can only deal damage, right? Uh, the way to build Drow is that you either get three hunts really quick with Drow, or you use Drow's undead tribe and just find another undead. Because the undead bonus is just so insane early game, right? Minus four armor means that all your units effectively get like 20% extra damage. It's so good, right? It charges your ultis faster because you're dealing more damage. You burst down one unit from your opponent, so you know, you're effectively ruining their team. So uh, yeah, Drought is really, really good in damage. That is a B. B rank for Drought. Next up, we got Enchantress. Oh god, Enchantress literally deals no damage, and if you poke her, she dies. However, her heal is very, very strong, especially if you get an Enchantress 2, right? Uh, Enchantress 2 can carry like r like early game, but falls off falls off late. So Enchantress is like a unit that's like really good if you get if you can spike it, and that's about it. Uh, the main reason that to use Enchantress in auto chest though is to just combine her into a two star unit and sell her because you know uh, Enchantress costs one 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 dollar to get and two Enchantress costs two dollars and you can sell Enchantress two for three dollars so you're actually gaining one dollar in the process of Enchantress shuffling so that's basically the main use of this but otherwise you don't want to actually put her in your actual battlefield and team right so. Not that good. I would stay away from Enchantress. It's a D. Next up, we've got one of the newer units. It's Mars. Uh, Mars is a beast at tanking. He just tanks everything, okay? Uh, early to Mars, your team is just not going to die. Because, like, he's just going to bulwark uh, and reduce all physical damage dealt in front of him. It's also early game, right? So, mages are not going to be online this early. Uh... Everybody's gonna need to auto attack. So he just tanks everything. Be very careful though, because if you do not build gods, his passive is really bad. He shield bashes every eight seconds if you don't have if you are not going gods. And if you're going gods, he shield bashes every four seconds, so it's better. So the two star damage here uh becomes one star if you're not going gods. So just note that if you really want to tank, Mars is the one for you. And if you build Mars, you really want to build gods. It's a rec B for me. And for those of you who don't know, for the newer players, gods means that you can only have one of each tribe. So you can only have one, you can only have like one undead, you can only have two goblins and so on. So they do not get the synergy bonus. So very, very specific. Like only one elemental, for example. Next up, we've got Shadow Shaman. Oh God, trolls are just so bad at this level. Like he doesn't do anything, okay? Like sure he has a utility in terms of people the chicken, but he's not a unit, right? He doesn't do damage, he doesn't survive, he just turns people into chickens. So, same thing with Shadow Shaman. You need to use his tribes for it to be good. So you're either building trolls, or you have a disruptor to build shamans, right? And then it, it, he becomes a little bit better. But as, as, as a unit, as itself, it's pretty bad. So he's a D tier. Uh, just don't put him into anything. Put him into trolls or shamans. Next up, we've got Tinker. Tinker is pretty solid all around. Uh, the main challenge of Tinker is to actually get him to ulti without him dying, which is very difficult if you don't have anything uh, that kind of synergize with this. So you either synergize with Tron, so that if he gets the nanobots, then he can survive very easily. You can also put a crown or a uh, void stone on him so that he can actually charge his ulti a little bit faster. You can also actually put armor on him too, so you can put him at the front line, so you can take some damage and ulti that way. But if your Tinker is not ulting, 
that's a bad tinker, okay? So be very careful. And of course, as with all goblins, falls off really, really fast, right? Uh, even faster than bouncy and um, and and uh, clockwork. So make sure to transition out of tinker as soon as you can if you have the right units. Tinker gets a C for me. Next up, we've got Tiny. Oh my god, Tiny is insane now. I remember rating Tiny in F because uh, when he got first released, he was so bad. But, dude, he got buffs on buffs on buffs on buffs. Okay, so his toss throws a unit onto another close unit. Well, three spaces away. And it stuns both the toss unit and everything around it. Also deals magic damage. Tiny is also a very good tank, right? Survival is very high. He has a very, very uh, like a large health pool. And if you build elementals with Tiny, then you can just perma stun people for days. It's very easy, right? You just get a Morphling or you get a Razor. Uh, yeah, so very, very relevant. Like, Tiny is just great. Very, very strong. It gets an A from me. Just, just, if you get Elemental, once again, it's gonna carry your early game, man. That's what early game ne units need to be, right? It just needs to carry you. Next up, we've got Tusk. Tusk is basically always average, right? Uh, his ability doesn't really do that much. It just, it just deals a little bit of damage. Like, it, it, it does, it's significant damage, but it's not insane damage, right? And it also stuns them for one second, whatever, right? Uh, mainly, you want to build Tusk with Lycan. So, if you find an early Tusk too, then you really want Lycan so you can get Beast and Warriors. But overall, Tusk is a pretty shitty unit. You really need his tribe synergy to work with him. And Tusk 3 is kind of like uh, one of the worst three-star units in the game. So, you just got to be very careful of going this unit. Tusk gets a C from me. And finally, the new unit that got released this patch is Winter Wyvern. Winter Wyvern actually deals all right damage with her auto attacks. She has zero armor though. Very, very, uh, very, very low survival. But she has a very good ability. Uh, she makes one of your units that are hurt. Uh, she basically encases in an ice tomb. And once someone is encased in the ice tomb, they take zero physical damage from all sources. So that includes Beastmasters, Axis, and all auto attacks, basically. They don't take any physical damage, and they regenerate a lot of health. So how you play Winter Wyvern is very, very easy. You have one unit in the front, and then you have Winter Wyvern in the back, and then the Winter Wyvern can just, like, you know, ice block that unit, right? Because she also prioritizes um, units that are lower health. So if you have only one tank in the front, then Winter Wyvern is going to go on that, and then uh, they're just going to keep on hitting the ice block guy, and they the ice block guys don't take any damage, so it's increased survivability, right? Uh, so Winter Wyvern is actually pretty good. Uh, I've built her in a couple of pools before. She doesn't just randomly go into any build, obviously, but she's alright. She gets a C. And of course, after every um group of what uh of uh the same cost units, I'm gonna have this little table here so you can refer to it. So this is the tier listing for all the tier of the one cost units so if you want to save this picture that's good but this is generally the rankings for all the one cost units you guys like tables and i like them too all right onwards to two cost units we have beastmaster to start us off with beastmaster got a buff just in the recent most recent patch his axes deal the same amount of damage that he deals uh, from release. So Beastmaster is actually really, really strong. And of course, Beastmaster's axes are physical. So when you build this Beastmaster, obviously you want to go Orcs and Hunters because that's one of his tribes. But a secret synergy to Beastmaster is going Undead. If you have Undead, then his axis actually deals 20% damage, 20% bonus damage to all units, right? Because the Undead affects all units. So if you can build Undead with Beastmaster, that would be a big plus. Yeah, Beastmaster gets a B. It's pretty strong. All right, onwards to the first demon. Chaos Knight is a demon. And demons, what they mean is that if you have only one demon, they deal 50% true damage on their auto attacks. So it's usually right to have one demon in all your comps because they're just so strong. And Chaos Knight is uh, it's a very strong unit just by itself. Yeah, sure, you can build like knights with him. But if you just have like a Chaos Knight randomly, like a level 2 Chaos Knight just for your build, he hits like a truck. Alright, his damage is insane. Also, um, his ability is alright. He, he stuns a random target for a random amount of time, deals a little bit of damage, that's okay. But you're mainly using Chaos Knight because you want to carry. He hits very, very hard. So, A tier for me, and of course, a big bonus if you're going nice with him as well. Oh, Crystal Maiden! Zero damage unit! Okay, if you, build ma if you have a massive madness in your mage build, and you don't know where to put it on, 
don't put it on Crystal Maiden, okay? She does zero damage. Do not put Massive Madness on Crystal Maiden. You rather just disassemble your Massive Madness and put a quarter staff to your Razor instead, okay? Just don't, okay? That's that's the number thing, number one thing that pops in your mind. <laughs> All right, so Crystal Maiden. Uh, her ability is uh, regenerates uh, mana for all your other units, and she doesn't actually cast any spells, right? She's also a mage, and she's insane late game. Uh, early game and mid game, she's trash because why would you want you to regenerate your mana when you know you just want to gain mana by attacking and taking damage, right? The main reason Crystal Maiden is so good late game is because she's a mirror breaker. Late game is all about getting your ulties first, right? Getting your stuns first, getting your AoEs first, and Crystal Maiden actually helps you tick up faster. So she's a game changer in late game, but dude, she sucks early game. So you better be very careful about her. Uh, every Crystal Maiden you buy early game is two gold that you're basically investing in late game. And if you never get to late game, then she's just terrible. So very careful of Crystal Maiden. She gets a D rank overall because there are much better units, but just keep in mind that you know, she can actually win a one- She wins 1v1s a lot. Not until then. Oh god, it's Furion! Oh, Furion is just such a trash unit, like... Oh god, okay, she sub- He summons trees that don't really do much. He's also paper, he has zero armor for some goddamn reason. Her- his health pool is just so low, like, it's just... It, it, it's such a trash unit. Okay, like, sure, he gets a little bit of utility for summoning units, because you can actually punish people more if you, are like, have an insane team, so you can- deal more damage uh he's actually okay in elves like if he if you really need to get the six elf then Firon's there for you but god Firon is just one of the i think you can actually safely say it, it he is actually the worst unit in the game at currently uh in this patch just does no damage summons strings that don't do no damage and you really just want him to make your other druids combine better right f for Firon. Don't put this in your team, dude. Don't, don't put this guy. Next up, we've got uh, Litzt. Uh, he used to be a 5-star unit, but now a 5-cost unit, but now he's a 2-cost. Uh, his ability got changed to a Frost Shield. So what the Frost Shield does is he puts it on a unit, and the unit gains increased armor. Whenever a unit attacks that unit, they get slowed. So basically, the slow 30% reduced attack speed. It's all Slow is like, like a generic term. And it also pulses very minor magic damage. It's so minor that it doesn't even matter. Once again, you're only using Litz in the sense that you want him as an undead. Right? If you want an undead or you want a mage, then you can put him in. But generally speaking, he's very underwhelming. Especially when he puts a shield on a unit that's dying. And then if the unit dies, the shield goes away. Which is actually ridiculous. Right? So very hard to make work. The only unit that's like really, really good with Litz is uh mars right if you have a mars in the front and it lifts at the back then um the shield actually works really well with mars but that's really the only unit you want so uh let's get to d uh very very care very very careful of this unit you really want to use his tribes and not just him as a unit next up we've got juggernaut uh juggernaut is a very strong unit when he whirlwinds he takes no magic damage and deals aoe damage so that's very strong uh, he's also two relevant tribes. Orc Warrior is really good. There's a lot of Orc Warriors, especially with Axe. And uh, yeah, uh, Jug 3 is one of the best carries in the game. Like if you get a Jug 3, you, you can basically just win. That, that, that unit is ridiculous. So Juggernaut is very strong. It gets a B. And uh, you know, has some added benefit of like, you know, good against mages. Good if you're playing Warrior Cleave, which is basically playing a lot of Warriors that deal a lot of AoE damage. Uh... It's kind of like the pillar of uh, Warrior Cleave. Next up, we've got Luna. Luna is only only deals damage. Like, she only deals damage because uh, every time she auto-attacks, she bounces her auto-attacks to other people. Uh, one of the best things to do with Luna is to stack her up with a lot of damage items because, uh, well, if she deals more damage, then her bounces deal even more damage, right? Attack speed also works really well with Luna. Just make sure that you have a good front line for Luna. Because if you do not have someone tanking for her and she gets hit, she's dead. And you're dead. And nobody's happy. There's also a concern that Luna charges ulti really fast. Because she's splitting his, her damage to a lot of units, right? So some people will be like, oh wow, that's really bad. Because Luna makes my opponent's ulti faster, right? So, uh, but, but my point is that Luna's DPS is just so high. If you have enough damage and you just kill off everybody in your opponent's team, then it's fine, you know? That, that's actually great. So I don't think that's actually a negative thing. Yeah, just stack her up with items, man. 
Uh, she gets to see. Definitely, you need to build around her a little bit, and you do need some items to make her work well. But when she works well, she works really well. Uh, Mirana, also known as Milana, <laughs> in my stream, because she sometimes trolls a lot. Yeah, she's okay. Uh, her ulti is perhaps one of the most randomly good ulties and randomly bad ulties ever. Like, if she shoots a dead target, it does nothing. If she shoots a, a carry, like a TB or like, you know, a troll warlord or something, then she's insane. But, like I said, mainly you want to use her as a hunter. If you want to build hunters, then Mirana is there. Just don't rely on Halti being actually good, okay? Like, it's so random that you don't even know how it's going to work. But since she's a hunter and she deals pretty good damage by herself, uh, like her auto attack is actually really, really high. Like the damage is super high. Uh, she gets to see. She's all right. Next up, we've got Morphling. Oh, Morphling got a buff. Okay, I do need to explain this Morphling buff. Uh, she got... Uh, so Morphling got uh, more damage and his ulti does more damage now. So even though the damage looks like a 1, as soon as you build a Morphling 2, she deals so much damage. Like, if she, if you put her in the front, uh, she actually takes enough damage to ulti and then run away. And the damage is actually insanely high. Just make sure that you need to get Morphling 2. You cannot... Morphling 1 is actually just trash. Like, Morphling 1 is like D, but Morphling 2 is like a B, or even like an A in mage comps, right? So, uh, overall, overall she gets a C. She's alright, um, but just make sure that if you play Morphling, you need a Morphling 2. Morphling 2 or just sell it, okay? Like, it doesn't work. Sure, you can build elementals or whatnot, but Morphling 1 is not a unit. Next up, we've got Puck, the cutest unit in uh, auto chest for sure. Uh, usually, you want to build Puck because you're either going dragons or you're going mages or you're going gods. Uh, those are the two, three main tribes you want to build Puck with. Uh, he's not really a good, um, uh, good standalone unit, so you can't just put him into anything. Uh, generally, a pretty bad unit as well. You really just need to, like, Go crazy. The main reason of Puck, that why he's bad, is because he takes so long to charge the first ulti, you know? Like, by the time you charge the ulti, then your opponents might already have went on and killed your frontline already. So, yeah, you just need to be very careful with Puck. Place him in a good position that he's only getting hit by one unit. And that's like the perfect, that's, that's like the perfect positioning. But now, yeah, overall, Puck is pretty bad. Next up, we've got Quap. Oh yeah, Quap deals so much AoE damage. She screams in the cone. Just, just so much damage, man. Uh, she also charges her ulti really fast because she's a uh, demon. And the main position you want to put Quap in is right behind your tank. So if your tank is in the front line, then you want Quap immediately right at the back so she doesn't jump, right? She's an assassin, which means that she's coded to jump at the back line to hit the back line first. But if you put her right behind your tank, he doesn't, she doesn't jump, and she actually AoEs more units that way, so keep that in mind. One very, very bad um, thing about Quap is that she falls off insane late game. Late game, she's actually trash. The reason for that is because there's just so much AoE, she's really paper, and uh, if you're not going assassins, then uh, she's just going to get nuked down along with her tanks. So just really, really bad. And of course, the scream doesn't really scale well into late game. It only does like a specific amount of damage, right? So the later the game goes, the less effective this goes. But she's still a really strong unit because she's a demon, fits into most comps, gets a B from me. You cannot underestimate AoE in this game. AoE is insane. Next up, we've got Slardar. Don't let the stats fool you uh, because okay, Slardar as a unit, he deals a lot of damage. His auto attack is the highest it, for a two cost unit, right? His auto attack is insane. His survival is also insane. He, he has a large health pool. The problem with Slardar is that he is a warrior and he is a Naga. Two of the worst tribes, I guess. Um, I mean, war is relevant, but I mean, the other tribes are better. And Naga is actually just useless early game. There's not a lot of magic damage. And if you late game, if you need Naga, then you just want to build the other ones. So. Yeah, like, Slardar is just really, really bad um, in that case. Her, his ulti is also just garbage. Uh, his ulti is Amplify, Amplify Damage, I believe that's the name. Uh, basically puts an armor debuff on a single unit. And it's actually better for Slardar to not use his ulti, because when he's ulti, he can't auto-attack. Uh, so with a unit that's very strong in stats, but has no tribes and no ultis, 
makes this a very bad unit in general. So it's a rank D. Uh, generally speaking, there's only one person going Slardar ever. And if it's you, then you can get Slardar 2 or Slardar 3 really easily. But just know that this unit is literally just a worse demon in a sense. You can only carry. All right, five, next up, oh, wait, a few more to go. We have Timbersaw. Timbersaw is one of the crazy uh, goblins that everybody goes like, wow, this is insane in Tron, right? Uh, one of the most defining factor of Timbersaw is that his ulti is pure damage, which means that it goes through armor and magic armor, which is, that, that's actually ridiculous, right? Uh, he survives a lot. He's really good. And the Timbersaw too can just carry you as well. He's easy to build Tron. And it's also a very good frontline, like a tank. Uh, and all comps need tanks, right? So Timbersaw can actually make you actually get that, uh, get that thing. Like Timbersaw and hunters or mages, like that's actually fine until you can replace it with something else. So Timbersaw is a very solid unit. It gets an A from me. Uh, you really want to pick this up if you can find it. And yeah, just stomps early game really, really well. And the last two cost unit is Witch Doctor. Witch Doctor does not deal any damage, but his ulti is one of the most, uh, Perhaps one of the most underestimated ultis. He stuns one uh, unit for one second, and then it bounces up to five times at level one and seven times at level two. It basically is really, really randomly strong against some comps, such as like Shadow Fiend. Because Shadow Fiend needs time to charge ulti, right? And if you stun him, he stops charging, and he charges again, and then you stun him again, and so on. So there are some units that are that, that, that this cask is like really, really powerful against. And of course, uh, Outside of that, Witch Doctor is not really that strong. So once again, you want to build trolls with Witch Doctor, like a lot. You really want to get trolls going. So overall, makes a very all right unit. Gets a C from me. It's okay. All right. And this is the tier list for the two cost units. Uh, as you can see, we have Timbersaw and Chaos Knight leading the pack. Uh, the, orc, the orcs are pretty good and Quap is pretty good. And then the rest are actually like fine. Just, uh, yeah. Two cost is kind of filled with a lot of tech units too, like the Ds and the Fs. They really, you really need to rely on your tribes to make them work. Every time you see an A or B, you can just tick it up and it's gonna do work for your comp. Onwards to the, the three cost. The three cost is perhaps the most interesting cost because you have some very, very interesting units. Starting with Abby. Dude, Abby does no damage, okay? Abby actually does no damage. He's a pure tank. Uh, his shield is really good in that it gives you a little bit of AOE, very, very minor. And it also gives you a little bit of survivability. It's very, very minor as well. Uh, you want to use Abby mainly because he's an undead, right? Like if you're playing Hunters and you have a Drow, then it's very natural for you to get Abby because you get a tank and you get the undead bonus, right? But overall, Abby is, as a unit is really bad. Like I said, you really want him as a sixth knight or even a fifth knight. You, you just want him as a knight as an undead, right? Pretty bad unit in general. Gets a D from me. Dazzle, one of the newer units. Uh, he's a... All right, so he's a troll, so really good in troll builds, obviously. And his ulti is Shadow Grave, uh, makes a unit become one health and doesn't die for four seconds, right? So it's randomly good, all right? It, sometimes it can be really good. Sometimes it can be like useless because if you're Shadow Graving something that's taking damage naturally, then Shadow Grave doesn't actually do anything. So you have to be very careful of it. Uh, there is a secret, synergy, secret um, benefit to Dazzle as well. It's because he's a priest, the only priest in the game. And priest makes it so that you don't take as much damage uh, from losing. So for every five damage you take, you take one less damage. So it's kind of like a 20% heal in a sense for losers. Uh, so if you're a loser, then you put Dazzle in because sometimes you can't really choose, right? Like sometimes people ha can build insane comps, right? Uh, people can get like, you know, a very fast, you know, see, uh, Chaos Knight 2 or like a Luna 2 or something insane like that. And you cannot take that much damage. So you put Dazzle in until you can stabilize or you can find something that can upgrade you. So like I said, just remember that you can also put this in like that. But as a unit in general, he's all right. He's a C, um, you know, put him in troll builds, you know, put him in when you're losing. He's all right. Oh, he's also secretly good in gods too. Uh, if you have two gods, if you have Mars and Zeus, then Dazzle can actually survive literally forever in a sense. So it's interesting. Next up, we've got Lina. Uh, Lina, the mage that does a lot of damage, but doesn't really do anything else. Uh, yeah, her Laguna Blade deals a lot of burst damage to one unit and also buffs her um, auto attack after she casts it every time. So yeah, she can theoretically hit really hard, 
But generally speaking, she's a pretty bad unit because uh, her ulti is very unreliable. Uh, you can ulti a unit that's already dead, which does nothing. You can ulti a unit that's a tank, which technically does nothing. You can also ulti a unit that doesn't take magic damage at all, such as like a ward, like a Vino ward, or like even a wolf from a, from a Lycan, and that's pretty bad. So overall, Lina's just pretty bad. Uh, not, not a big fan of this. You know, stack her of items, and even then, she's not really that good. She's a D. Uh, you want her as a human, and uh, you want her as mainly as a mage. And usually mages can build humans very easily, but outside of that, Lean is pretty bad. All right, onwards to Lycan. Oh god, Lycan, dude, my favorite unit when I first started auto chess. When he transforms, uh, he becomes a wolf that deals uh, that that gets a chunk of health, and also summons two wolves, which can, which are assassins, so they can actually jump at the back line and kill you, kill kill your opponents and stuff like that. Lycan is a very sick unit. The main challenge of Lycan is to make him transform. Right? If he doesn't transform, he's useless. If he transforms, he's ridiculous. So either get a uh, Lycan 2 or put him into a position that he doesn't, he's not going to take a lot of damage. So off to the sides would be really nice. Man, Lycan is just so such a strong unit. Like, it, he's a B. Just uh, if you get through that challenge of making him survive somehow, then yeah, he's great. Next up, we've got Omni Knight. Omni Knight is uh, very, very strong right now because, uh, well, just like Timbersaw, he also has a pure damage ulti. He heals someone for an amount and deals pure damage around that unit for the same amount. And that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage for Omni. So once again, Omni's challenge is to make him ult. There's so many Omnis that I see in games that he just dies without ulting. And that's actually terrible. You need the Omni to, um, to live to his ulti. And that's also not that challenging. He has 10 armor, which is, uh, you know, way above average. And uh, if you build knights with Omni, then he gets a shield randomly, and that's gonna make him survive. So Omni is a very, very solid unit. I'm gonna give him B. Once again, like, purification is just so powerful. But it has a long cast time. He has to slap on, slap his hand on the ground, wait a few seconds, and then it comes out, you know? So, yeah. Make sure he lives. Next up, we've got PA. Wow, PA got through a lot of different changes, but she deals so much damage okay especially if you load her of items so if you build like her her uh passive is basically the assassin um bonus which makes it so that she can crit sometimes if you build assassins with her though you just get more chance of crits more chances of crits and she also jumps at the back line so even though she doesn't really survive really highly the fact that she jumps at the back line means that she kind of survives in a sense and PA3 is one of the strongest carries that you can go. She just one-shots units, right? And at that point, it doesn't really matter uh, what your opponent has. And she just randomly just kills them off, right? PA is really, really powerful. Um, gets an A tier for me. Just just make sure... Like, you get, you're very incentivized to play PA if you have the right items for her. Massive Madness, uh, you know, any damage items, stuff like that, you know? Uh, and if you have a cloak or something like that, Make sure you slap it on her because she dies to random magic damage all the time. So this is a very good target for Cloak. Uh, it's really good. Phantom is PA is really good. Okay, onwards to Razor. Oh god, Razor is insane. Like, yeah, you might go like, wow, how can a 3-star unit have 5 stars on damage? No, Razor is insane. Razor deals so much freaking damage. She basically fits in every comp. And the 2-star Razor is just, just, just so demoralizing for your opponent to face. It just... The damage is ridiculous! You alien the entire board, right? Um, also, extra benefit of it being an elemental. Also, extra benefit of it being a mage, right? If you get a mage with Razor, the, the, the damage just skyrockets. There's also an extra benefit to Razor that people don't know, is that his health pool is actually insanely high. I put Razor in my front line all the time if I have a very high damage build already because I have elementals, right? I just need people to attack Razor so they get stunned. Like, you should actually check. Like, Razor has an insane, absurd amount of high health pool, right? So, that's also an option. Uh, he, he has a lot of utility because he just AoEs down everything. Uh, your opponents don't even get a chance to act. I always say that, like, Razor beats Shadow Fiend, in a sense, because Razor just nukes down Shadow Fiend before Shadow Fiend can actually get the ulti off. But, yeah. In sync, in sync. Unit, always consider it if you roll it. S tier. Super Pog. Give, give, give this Razor a clap. Insane card. 
Next up, we've got Shadow Fiend. Uh, Shadow Fiend is pretty much similar to Razor. Uh, he's a demon though, but his survival is so low. His survival is like super, super low. Um, and because he's not naturally a mage, he can't really... The damage potential of Razor is a little bit higher than Shadow Fiend. However, don't... Don't think that because he's not forced 5 star damage doesn't mean he doesn't deal damage. He still deals a lot of freaking damage, okay? He's a demon. He actually fits in more comps because every comps needs demon. And like I said, AoE, man. His AoE just basically wrecks entire teams in the early game. And even in the middle game with, uh, with a Shadow Fiend 2, he can just blow people up, uh, especially the squishies at the back. So Shadow Fiend is awesome. Uh, also Warlock. Uh, and if you build Warlocks, the Shadow Fiend ulti can actually heal him for a lot. So, also an S tier. Yeah, like, sure, the stats are not as insane as Razor, but you're not passing this unit often. Like, you, you see a Shadow Fiend, you get a Shadow Fiend. It, it, it's just so insane. It's just ridiculous. Next up, we've got Sniper. It's very interesting because Sniper, right now, got a huge buff. Huge buff! His ulti used to ca take one second to, um, to, to cast. And now it's a 0.5 second. You know how huge that is? Let me explain how huge that is, okay? Back then, Sniper would have full mana and he would choose to ulti someone. However, if that unit moves, he cancels his channeling and he channels again. So for example, if your if your tank just dies and your sniper is about to ulti that guy, he moves and then he's, oh, he stops. Okay, he's gonna channel okay, ulti again, he's moving, okay, he stops. Basically, his ulti was a meme because he actually loses damage. But now that it's 0.5 seconds, it means that the unit is most probably not going to be able to dodge the channeling. So the fact that he already has a very high base attack uh, and like his auto attack is a like actually quite insane. He now has a relevant ulti. Yeah, his sniper is good now. So I will give him a B. And uh, if you need damage, then you can just build a sniper. Just make sure that you protect them because he actually just... He doesn't survive at all. He gets poked down and he dies. Oh my god, TP, my boy. TP is insane, okay? One of, one of, if not the highest damage dealer in the entire game, if you can actually build him correctly. So his ulti is Sunder, which, uh, well, it's Metamorphosis. Uh, what he does, he transforms into a huge ash demon, and he just kills off everything with his ranged attack. It's pure damage once again, right? Because he's probably gonna be your only demon, right? However, there is a however. However, he cannot charge his ulti quickly, okay? His ulti charges so slow, and he doesn't do any damage when he's charging it up. Um, so one of the best ways to go TB is if you get a Void Stone. Dude, if you get a Void Stone, if you get a Void Stone, TB is your guy to go. And if you get a TB2, you win. You just win. Protect the TB becomes your game, right? So it's a very interesting build in that TB is kind of a build by himself. There's also a secret synergy on um, on health items, I guess. Like if you put armor on health on, t on TB, then it gets better because, well, he's just going to summon something anyways, right? So the longer he lives, the more he can just um, steal um, health from your other guys and become better. And another secret synergy is for um, summons. So if you have something like a Lycan or a Vino, he can actually suck health from those units instead. And that becomes really, really uh, good as well. So just, uh, yeah, super carry. That's gonna be not as insane as people think. And I mean, if I were gonna rate this unit, I would rate it an S. But I mean, let's be realistic. TP is not insane, but... It is one of my favorite units for sure. Next up, we've got Trin Protector. Uh, Trin basically does no damage. I mean, he 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 slaps people very slowly. His ulti heals, uh, deals very very minor damage, but heals in a, like a little circle, whatever. Uh, he survives a long time because of the heal. But Trin is actually really really good in um, terms of two builds. There's the assassin build which uh, you run a lot of assassins, and because there's two natural elves in assassins, you can just get tree in and you get elves. So the six assassins in a tree is actually one of the best comps you can ever make. And of course, the other comp is elves, just pure elves. Like you can put it in hunters because hunters has a lot of elves as well, and you can tank a lot. So make sure you have a lot of damage to offset the low damage that he has. You know, use his survival to make your damage dealers deal more damage. Uh, he's actually a B. Um, I'm very, very impressed with trains and that sort of thing. And of course, like I said, every comp needs a freaking tank. 
So yeah, Vol also very easy to make because he's a druid. You just need two train protectors to make a tree two, and getting a tree three is very very simple as well. So uh, yeah, make sure you keep that in mind when you're building hunters or assassins. We have Vino Mancer. Uh, Vino is so randomly insane. One of the best units to carry once again a void stone or a uh, crown because every time he ults, he makes a ward, uh, and the ward is, the ward is just absolutely insane. Like the ward. First of all, it deals damage, right? It spits. It deals a lot of damage. Uh, when it spits on something, they get slowed. So they lose attack speed. And finally, I don't know. If you're playing Vino, you're happy. If you're playing against Vino, you're not happy. The wards are magic immune. So uh, if your opponent has a Lina and the Lina ulties the ward, it takes zero damage. If there's a Witch Doctor or even a Razor or like a Shadow Fiend, it takes zero damage because it just it just doesn't take any magic damage. It's a ward. So uh, yeah, very insane in some comps. Uh, make sure you protect him. Make sure you make him ulti as much as possible and make sure you put, put him in the right place. Gets a B from me. It's actually quite strong unit. Next up, we've got Viper. Uh, Viper, also known as Papega. Uh, very important unit if you're running dragons because, you know, you just want to ulti immediately and you also want the dragon synergy. He's also a very good assassin because, you know, you need him for all the assassins, right? So he's actually all right. He deals pretty good damage. His ulti is actually insane if you can land it on the right unit. It's kind of random, but like if you imagine if you land it on their carry, right? Uh, then you just effectively win that match. So uh, yeah, Viper is secretly good. Make sure you have like actual auto attack and make sure you have a tanks to make him do better and um, yeah you can watch him just Pepega all day because his ulti has a very low cooldown once you build dragons Viper can actually ulti twice very easily so yeah it's awesome give him a C sweet final three cost unit is Windrunner Windrunner deals so much damage uh, her ulti shoots shoots a arrow in the line and it just deals so much damage <sighs> however there's a big however. She misses her arrow like, I don't know, 20% of the time? But it really feels like all the time? Like, god. Like when Wind Ranger misses her ulti, it feels so bad. Like she likes shooting trees, she likes shooting the air. So when you have a Wind Runner, put her in the corner. You really need to put her in the corner because other if she decides to shoot like straight on down the line, at least you're reaching more units, right? If you're putting her in like near the front or something and she shoots backwards and the unit dies, you actually lose all, all the damage. So just be very, very careful. But Windrunner is great. She's an elf. She's a hunter. The hunter is more relevant, obviously, but yeah, she's great. Gets an A from me. And since that's the last unit, let's take a look at the table of tier list for three cost units. Yeah, three cost units, like I said, there's a lot of different things you can do. There's a very good units. There's a really, like, you know, even... um. What's it called? Even the units that are kind of low tier, they still have like tribe synergies, right? So all these units are generally pretty good. So uh, yeah, three cost units are great. So let's go ahead and move on to the four cost units. Now, oh my God, now we're actually getting the power. The power level is coming. Starting with Alchemist. Uh, Alchemist has no armor, <laughs> but his ulti is one of the best ultis uh, ever right like his ulti is great uh not only does he um buff himself to get insane uh regen and attack speed the attack speed doesn't really matter that much but more importantly he applies a negative armor debuff so just by himself he's basically your undead synergy so really really strong in some comps like hunters and um you know assassins something like that he also helps you because he's an ogre uh gives you a little bit of health on all your units and uh one thing to really know about alchemist is that his ulti will always come down his ulti's cast time is basically zero so if he has he, if he gets 100 mana, he's going to cast his ulti. Some units actually get to 100 mana and sometimes die before casting ulti. Not Alchemist. Alchemist is gonna, always going to pull it off. So it's a pretty solid unit. Gets a B from me. Sweet. Of, of course, you just want him to play in physical damage builds. Next up, we've got Disruptor. Oh god, Disruptor is not so Okay, uh, so Static Storm is a big AoE cloud that not only silences all the units that are in it, like all your opponent's units that are in it, uh, he also deals damage with the cloud. The cloud got buffed. 
Okay, so now instead of two, three, four seconds, it's 2.5, 3.5, and 4.5 seconds, which is ridiculous. And also, if you have a Shadow Shaman, you get an insta hex at the start of the game. So if you're playing eight, or eight versus eight, and you have Shadow Shaman and, and you have Disruptor, it becomes a seven, eight versus seven, which is just not fair. Like, Disruptor overall is just not a fair unit. And um, a level two Disruptor can just beat comps that just can't beat it. Like, mages can't beat Disruptor 2. Even gods have a very hard trouble dealing with uh, Disruptor 2. So, usually, if your gods are mages, the best way to counter a Disruptor is to build Disruptor yourself. Because Disruptor is e insane in mages and gods as well. So, it's a very high, uh, highly sought after unit. Make sure you try and pick this up as soon as you can. S tier. That's right. S tier. Super good. Next up, we've got Doom. Uh, Doom is one of the best demons offered in the game. Uh, very high damage, very high survivability, and her, his ulti uh, deals, makes someone, makes, basically silence someone for the duration of the fight, and also deals a chunk of damage. And dude, his auto attack is insane. And since Doom is probably gonna be on, your only demon, he deals like, he, he just hits like a truck. Like, he's everything. Dude, he's a tank, he's a damage dealer, he's a silencer, he's a utility guy. Just, Doom is everything in one. Insane unit. S tier, okay? Doom, Doom is ridiculous. So good. Next up, we've got Dragonite. Dragonite is more of a build around because you need him to ulti to actually do something. He doesn't do any damage in his human form, but once he transforms into dragon form, he does deal damage. And the jump from... Dragonite 1 to Dragonite 2 is actually nuts because Dragonite 1 has an acid breath that, you know, deals dot damage, which is fine, whatever, dot damage to one target, okay? But Dragonite 2, not only does he get a splash, so when he when he deals damage to a unit, 50% of the damage splashes in a circle. The splash also applies the acidic um, dot. So Dragonite 2 just deals insane. It, it just deals godly amounts of damage. And uh, yeah, it's just insane. So Dragonite, usually you want to build him as a ranged unit. You want to put him in the back line with two other dragons. So you, he just transforms at the start of the game. Uh, or you can play six knights with Dragonite, but then you actually have to give Dragonite like void stones or attack damage items so he can transform faster. So you have to be careful with that. But overall, Dragonite's a build around uh, rank A. You need to be dragons to play Dragonite. That's kind of what it is. All right, next up we've got Coddle, which is Grandpa. Grandpa deals insane amounts of damage. However, he needs a lot of support. Uh, if you have no support, uh, Coddle does nothing, okay? So support means you need to either give him a mana regen item or you need to pair him with CM, right? Remember Crystal Maiden, one of the weirdest units? If you have Crystal Maiden and if you have Coddle, then Coddle can actually ulti because his ulti is actually ridiculous. It's a huge... AOE wave of magic damage that goes like and just so much damage, especially of mage uh, synergy as well. Um, just put him in the corner and your, your opponent's team is just going to get deleted it, it, whenever he ults. So like I said, make sure he ults. Make sure you put some mana regen items on him. Make sure you get a CM2 at least. It's a rank B. It doesn't fit into every comp, but when he fits into your comp, he's going to perform. All right, almost to Kanka. Kanka got a uh, huge nerf. So Kanka 1 is not as good as you think. All right, so when he ults, he summons a ghost ship that uh, stuns everything in a big circle. It's huge. The circle is insane. However, Kanka 1 only stuns for 1 second. Kanka 2 is insane because then it stuns for 1.5 seconds. Uh, it's a long stun. And he also is a very good tank. 10 armor, uh, 950 health, lots of health, and also human, so you can randomly just silence people. Uh, generally a very good unit. But just make sure that it's not a very it's not a unit that you need to like if you have better units as, as tribes and stuff like that, right? So it, he's an A, like he's still really really powerful. But I think a lot of people overrate him a little bit too much. He's not an auto include in your comps. Next up, we have a lone druid. A lone druid is one of the most busted units ever, uh, because uh, you know as a unit himself, he doesn't really do that much. But his ulti summons a bear, and oh my god, the bear is ridiculous, okay? So the bear is has a lot of health, hits for like a truck, okay, hit, hit, like damage on the bear is insane, and more importantly, 25% chance to entangle your opponent, which basically is stunned for 3 seconds. There is no unit that can stun for 3 seconds in this entire game, like that's just ridiculous. And the bear, it's, it's, it's also a passive on the bear, so you don't, the bear doesn't even need to ulti to stun which is 
just ridiculous. You can stun a unit that's already stunned, and that's just insane. So when you have a Lone Druid that's really, really big, like a Lone Druid 2 or Lone Druid 3, he can actually tank for you, and then during the tank, he will take some damage, he'll summon your bear, and then he'll die, so that he acts as like a tank and a damage afterwards. Just, just Lone Druid is just insane. That's an S tier right now. Um, Make sure you upgrade him. And oh well, yeah, of course he's a druid, right? You can upgrade him so easily. Two lone druids is a lone druid two, and four lone druids is a lone druid three. Like the scaling on this is just so fast. Like dominates mid game and also performs in the mid late game as well. Next up, we got Medusa. Medusa is uh is a hunter and is a naga, but more importantly, her ulti basically just stops your opponent from doing anything. I mean, her LT just affects everything, everybody that's looking at her, and everybody's gonna look at her if you position your units right. Like, like don't, just don't be stupid if you're a Medusa positioning. Place him near the middle of your team. Uh, you know, you wanna give her mana items so she can ulti faster. And once she uses her ulti, it just goes off. Like, if she gets stunned or silenced during the ulti animation, it doesn't even work. So that's really, really powerful. And when your opponents turn to stone, they take additional mag physical damage. That's like such a random bonus. That's really good. Medusa 2 is really much, much better than Medusa 1. So keep that in mind. Uh, and if your Medusa is not ulting, then just get her out. She really needs to ulti for her to be good. But dude, this unit is ridiculous. S tier. She can actually just change the game based on the ulti by herself. So just, yeah, make sure she ulties. Next up, we've got Necro. Necro has insanely high utility because her his ulti uh, is, so, so he, he, he basically does a pulse, right? So he affects everything around him, ally or enemy. He heals his allies and damages his enemies. That's one of the biggest utility um, things ever, right? Like, for example, if your opponent has like a Shadow Fiend or like a Razor and they AOE, well, Necro basically says, no, they don't AoE because he heals back all your units anyways and also deals damage. So Necro is insane. Like, actually ridiculous. Uh, she's, he says, he's also undead. So fits well into, you know, comps that already have an undead, like Abby or Drow, you know, stuff like that. And absurdly high health pool. So like really, really high health pool. Make sure to put Necro a little bit in the front because he can tank a bit. Uh, you know, you want to put your super squishies at the back. Necro's an A. Very, very strong unit. Onwards to TA. TA is also insane. Uh, now now we're looking at Assassin. Uh, her ulti refraction makes her deal insane amount of damage. And more importantly, ignore uh, damage on, from, from like X amount of sources. And it doesn't matter what damage that is. It can be a Laguna Blade. It can be an auto attack. It could be a dot or something like that, right? So yeah, th TA is just very, very awesome. Uh, she jumps at the back line, hits all your opponent's squishies and uh survives herself so you know if if your opponent's unit is randomly decided to attack ta she's gonna survive and she's a very strong unit that's an a right now you don't need to be assassins to play her but obviously she shines the most in assassins and final unit on the four cost is troll warlord holy jesus christ troll warlord can deal so much damage she, he basically gains extra attack speed attacking the same unit as her, it's his passive and if you're playing troll warlord as you're supposed to which is in trolls he just juggles his axes like at an insane rate. Um, obviously, he needs a little bit of support in the fact that you know you do need four trolls to make him really, really good, and you also need damage items to make him really, really good. Especially things that can proc on attacks, such as like uh, Maelstrom. Maelstrom is one of the best items on Troll Warlord because it just attacks so fast. Um, so it's definitely build around. It's an A. Doesn't fit into all your comps, but dude. All you need to know, like as you can see for all these four cost units uh, in this table, they have a lot of carries, right? So you want to build your team around one of these carry units, such as like, like these three, like TA, Troll, and Dragonite. These are all carries. So these are your payoffs for going Assassins, Trolls, or Dragons. Uh, you also can find some really, really good units, like S tier units. You get a lot of utility units. Um, even like Keep of the Light is one of your carry units for, for, for mages, right? So four cost units, probably the most important unit because it kind of dictates what kind of build you can go towards, right? So yeah, one cost is your early game. Two cost is kind of like your early game as well. Three cost is the interesting picks, but the four cost is kind of like your build around, your anchor. So four cost units are very cool. Let's start with DP. DP is uh, one of the newer units. Uh, she casts Exorcism 
which summons a lot of spooky ghosts, and the spooky ghost deals a lot of physical damage. Uh, it's kind of weird because this is one of the um, one of the only in this game that can deal physical damage as uh, her ulti, which is kind of rare. Uh, DP is a very very weird. In the sense that you really need her to live. If she dies, all her ghosts disappear. So you really need to put DP in a very good spot. Also, she doesn't actually charge her ulti that fast. So you have to be very, very careful with playing DP. She is an undead, which is really, really strong. Because undead makes it so they lose armor. And if they lose armor, then the ghosts deal more damage. So it's a natural uh, synergy. But uh, yeah, uh, make sure you have a lot of tanks. A lot, lot of uh, frontline for DP to work well. DP's an A. Not an insane unit, but really good if you can pull her off. Next up, we've got Enigma. Enigma is really, really powerful. One of the best units of the game because it's, once again, uh, like Timber and Omni, has one of the most busted ulti uh, types, which is pure damage. Pure damage means that it ignores everything. If your opponent has a lot of armor, if your opponent has a lot of, uh, you know, shield type of materials. Dude, even if your opponent has, like, night shields, right? This actually, the ulti actually pierces. So what he does, he puts a pool of, um, it basically it's like a black pool of energy that pulses max health damage every second. And it just basically rips through teams entirely especially units that are th uh, three stars right because they have high health pools and then enigmas like the damage is just going to be insane the more health that they have the more damage that this does right so the best the best position to put enigma is to put it near the front so he can tank a bit place his ulti and then die like after he ults he's kind of useless but the damage is just so high and so ridiculous that you just really like a lot of comps just went in an egg that's an s tier unit right there the damage is just ridiculous. Next up, we've got Gyrocopter. Uh, Gyrocopter deals a lot of damage, and he actually secretly has a lot of armor. She ha he has 15 armor, which is kind of weird as, uh, you know, it's a ranged unit. Same thing with uh, most of these five cost units that we're going to see. They all share a theme, is that once they ulti, they can die. It doesn't really matter. Um, uh, Gyro's ulti is a huge circle on the ground that AoE pulses two times. And the AoE damage is ridiculous. Like, it's actually ridiculous. Think of Razor, Razor 2. It's basically the same damage as Razor 2, like a Gyro 1. And God knows what the Gyro 2 is going to do, right? So my uh, advice for you to build Gyro is that if Gyro is dying too fast and not ulting, put him in the back line. If he is not ulting quick enough and, you know, your front line is dying, then you put him in the front line. So, uh, yeah, his uh, tribes are pretty bad. That's why he only gets an A. He is a um, he is a dwarf, uh, mech, which is basically nothing. Like two tribes that don't really make sense in that late game, it, they don't do anything. So you're losing a tribe bonus there for sure. But like I said, if you really need the AOE and you're really getting some gyrocopters, then you can play him. It's really good. Next up, we've got Sven, uh, one of the newer units. Uh, he is a demon warrior, so if you need a demon, it does a lot of damage. However, he has a very interesting ulti. Uh, his ulti is God Strength. And what God Strength does is that he increases all your demons, including himself. Their base damage increased by 100%. So it's basically double damage. Uh, which means that if you have a Shadow Fiend, or if you have a, um, if you have a Doom, or God forbid, you're running demons then Sven becomes like actually just nutsos. Like he's going to get his ulti off because he has a very high health pool and he can um, he can tank pretty well. So he can actually be in the front line. But yeah, once he ultis, the buff stays permanently throughout the fight and he just does a lot of damage. So Sven is definitely S uh, because I mean, come on, he's Sven. He starts with S, okay? Uh, very, very strong unit, especially if you can uh, support him with demons. Next up, we have Techies. Techies is, uh, man, Techies is freaking awesome. Uh, very high health pool for something that looks so small and also has 10 armor, look, like lots of lots of armor. Um, what he does, he puts a bomb and then the bomb explodes, dealing insane and ungodly amounts of physical damage. So, uh, you know, once again, if you have any um, things that can synergize with that, uh, then the bomb just gets better. So for example, alchemist negative armor, undead negative armor, and stuff like that. Also, the pillar for goblins. Uh, one of the best late game comps is six goblins. 
And man, I've lost so many games where I'm just missing techies and techies never comes, right? So techies is just insane all around. You can play with goblins, you can play it by, by himself. Just place him near the middle so the bomb affects most of the most of your board. And um, yeah, he's just gonna wreck. It's awesome. Techies is an S, super strong. Next up, we've got Tidehunter. Oh my god, Tidehunter. The best utility creature in the game, honestly. Like, I mean, come on. Like, once he ultis, every unit in your opponent's board is going to get stunned, right? So once again, the goal of this uh, this five cost unit is you just need to get his ulti off. Once he gets his ulti off, it's really good. Uh, it's also very important to note that if your opponent is running a mages or god mages, uh, then you want you really want to get Tide Hunter, and you also really want to get Medusa because they're Naga synergy, so they're just randomly good. And obviously, the last thing that Tide Hunter is really good is he's a freaking hunter. So if you're running hunter builds, Tide Hunter is probably the best tank because not only can he tank tank. He also provides the um, hunter tribe bonus, so it's very easy to get six hunters. And he also stuns, which is exactly what hunters want. Hunters want CC, right? So all in all, hunter is a great unit, good in all comps, insane in hunter comps. Uh, gets an S for me. Also a Naga, which is just great. And then we have Zeus, very similar to Techies, and the fact that if you're playing gods, you really want to get a Zeus. Holy shit. Uh, if you get the god synergy, you just win the game. If you're not um, running ma uh, gods or mages, then Zeus is still insane because, um, you know, his ulti basically shocks all your opponent's creatures for uh, percentage health. Percentage health is insane in late game, right? Like, your opponent has, like, you know, your opponents can have three-star units in the late game, and this actually shocks for percentage health damage. That's ridiculous. He also has an added benefit that if you actually win with a Zeus on your opponent's board, he actually deals additional damage to the courier. So it's like an extra punishment. I don't know why it's in the, that's in the game. It's just a random punish, you know? So Zeus is great. That's an S for me. The goal of all these, um, ulti, uh, all these five cost units is make sure they ulti. If they ulti, you're probably going to win that fight. Oh, we have one more unit. One more unit, the best unit in the entire game. It's Io. <sighs> Io is the best unit in the game because, well, you're not gonna ever play with Io on the battlefield, right? What Io does is he acts as a wild card. So if you have two of the same kind of a unit and you have an Io, you can combine them as like a two-star unit. So you have two CKs, you have an Io, you wanna combine them. If you have two Konkas, you have an Io, you wanna combine them. God forbid, if you have two techies and you have an IO, it also works. IO is also a very special uh, five cost unit in that it appears any point in the game. You can actually get IO as soon as round one. So how IO works is you have a 1.5% chance to get it every round. Every round, you have a chance to get this. It doesn't matter what your level is. And um, yeah, I mean, IO is just ridiculous because if you think of the fact that IO only costs $5, and rerolling costs two dollars. This is just an insta buy in any comp, right? Uh, every time you reroll, you basically lose two dollars. And IO basically is whatever you want. So this is like an insta buy. Obviously, uh, this is just insane. It gives you such a big leg up, and you just kind of need to get lucky in a sense. Now, one advice I want to give to you guys for IO is that you really need to use IO as soon as you can. Okay. I see a lot of people with IO on the bench. Uh, when I first started, I also always put IO in my bench as well. And that's not the good way to use it. You need to push your advantage. You need to use this as soon as you can. Um, the only the only time where you want to save IO is if you're rerolling a lot. If you're rerolling a lot, you want to try and find your other pieces and use the IO last. But just make sure that you use your IO as soon as you can. But yeah, IO is the best unit in the game. SS rank. You want as many IOs as you can get. Just the unit you want, you know. That's just insane super solid and of course this is the final uh tier list for five cost units as you can see all the five cost units are insane like they're all just ridiculous so uh that's also a very big incentive for you to level your courier to get to level eight really fast so you can spike a legendary unit and then maybe just you know snowball from there and that's it thank you so much for watching the uh updated auto chess guide i'm sure this one is going to be um uh What's it called? It's going to be updated in a few months. But hey, now that you read the guide, you're going to get Queen super easily. So good luck out there. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, make sure you put it down in the chat below.
people are going to answer. I'm going to answer. We're going to help you out, okay? And make sure you watch my stream. Dude, make sure you watch my skillful play. Uh, I stream, um, what is it? Uh, 9, p 9 a.m. every Texas time, which is central time, right? So it's basically 7 a.m. Pacific time. So yeah, come tune into my stream, twitch.tv slash Amaz. <laughs>